The U.S. plans for cyber war games. Net neutrality heats up. And we find out just how hard it is to crack people's passwords on Hollywood Boulevard. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 255 for Friday, January 16th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. With integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Shall we play a game? The U.S. and U.K. are planning to conduct cyber war games. British Prime Minister David Cameron announced the games last night ahead of talks in Washington with President Obama today. The first planned attack will target the financial sector using the Bank of England, other commercial banks, the City of London, and Wall Street. The cyber war games will also test other critical national infrastructure. Britain's MI5 and the FBI will work together on this exercise. Mr. Cameron has said that cyber attacks are one of the big modern threats that we face. The talks come at an interesting time as there seems to be a widening gap between Cameron and Obama's ideas on counterterrorism and privacy. And now on to the ever-changing world of net neutrality. The big question around net neutrality is this. Should the companies that provide internet access be regulated like the phone industry, that is to be considered common carriers and have no legal ability to charge higher rates for prioritized connectivity? Most internet providers are strongly against what's called Title II regulation because it takes away a valuable source of revenue. But one provider surprised everyone today by supporting Title II regulation in a letter to the FCC. We've asked Jeff John Roberts. He's a law and policy reporter at GigaOM. We've asked him to talk about the story with us today. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, Megan. Good to be here. So for those people who are unaware of Title II, uh, can you give us a little primer on what it is? Uh, sure. Title II is pretty wonky stuff, even for wonks, so I'll try to <laughs> keep it short. It's Title II refers to a section of the Communications Act, um, and that's what the FCC, if they invoke it and they categorize you that way, you're a common carrier, um, like the phone line. It's sort of be like, you know, whoever your phone carrier is, they can't choose to, you know, who you can talk to or give you better service if you call McDonald's or call Burger King. So that principle of common carriage, uh, it can invoke a whole raft of obligations, some of which the FCC can hold back on. But the idea is you're a dumb pipe. The industry hates that term. But the idea is should internet traffic be considered the same way, just as Bell can't favor some types of phone calls over others, should, uh, when you're at home or on your phone getting the internet, can your carrier choose which comes in uh, quicker than others? And they would like to be able to do that, but a lot of people say that's a bad idea and that bandwidth is a commodity and should basically come in the same way. Right. So now Sprint came out today. There was a letter that they wrote. They were supporting Title II regulation. Why would they do this? Um, I think it's, I mean, the real politic of it, in my view, is that they see the writing on the wall. They suspect the chairman's going to do this anyways. So why not get out in front of it? And they might have a little less to lose, too, compared to uh, Verizon and uh, Comcast, which have huge home internet businesses. Um, whereas Sprint, uh, you know, they're largely a mobile carrier. And these rules will also apply to, to mobile carriers as well. But my guess on it is they're, they're figuring this is going to happen anyways. I don't think they love it, but why not make nice with Wheeler and the FCC um, and perhaps with some consumers too. Right. So you said Verizon and AT&T are, are against it. They claim that true net neutrality would remove the incentive for investment in faster networks. Um, now, Sprint claims that they'll continue to invest regardless. Who do you think is right and who's wrong here? Um, I think, uh, you know, when the proofs in the pudding, the last Spectrum auction, these companies are spending just billions of dollars to build out uh, broadband infrastructure. So I, I think um, they're, I don't want to say lying, but well, they're, they're lying if they say they're going to stop infrastructure <laughs> if Title II goes into force. It does, however, threaten a promising new revenue stream for them, which is where they want to charge people on both sides. Uh, you pay at your home to get your internet to come in. What they want to do is also charge people like Netflix too to make sure it gets to you. And it's a lot of people, including GigaOM, thinks that's double dipping. But that's, that's I think, where they smell the opportunity. And the FCC, if they do Title II, will cut that off. 
Right. So there, there was the issue with Netflix. There, explain what happened a few. It was last fall, right? Where, where they came out, talk, they saying they were going to charge Netflix. What happened there? Um, if well, I mean, from Netflix's point of view, it's almost like blackmail. A lot of consumers suddenly their Netflix was going very slowly and it mm -hmm. wasn't coming in, uh, and pretty much uh, Netflix had to pay the carriers, had to pay Comcast and Verizon, so that their their stream wasn't choked anymore. And the, those, those carriers say, well, Netflix, you're making all this internet stuff, you should pay for it. But I think a lot of people and consumer advocates say, wait a minute, I'm paying for this much internet, it's not up to Comcast or Verizon to choose which internet should come in faster or which, uh, which websites should load faster. It should all be treated the same. So that, that's the crux of the issue. Right. And the FCC will vote on net neutrality rules on February 26th. Do you have a prediction on which way the vote will go? Uh, Wheeler is strongly suggested he's going to do what title two the president has supported that um wheeler has two other uh, there's there's five people who vote um there's wheeler and two other democrats and uh, it's a pretty safe bet they're going to vote together the republican commissioners will go against it and you're right the slated vote date is february i, I believe 26 but look for a lot of action maybe a month before that because we'll start seeing their proposals leaked and people will start trying to shape the uh, the narrative either way Right. So now there was some other news today. Republicans in Congress, they came out with their draft legislation that supports net, that, that they claim to support net neutrality. One difference is the GOP plans to avoid the Title II designation, as you were talking about. Now, are they really proposing net neutrality? Uh, no. I mean, it's, it's, you can't really have net neutrality without Title II mm -hmm. because this all started when the FCC tried to impose net neutrality without Title II, the uh, D.C. Circuit Court one year ago today struck that down and said, if you want to do it this way, you better do it under Title II. And the thing the Republicans are proposing, no one's really had a chance to look at the details, but I'd be shocked if it actually was Title II uh, or if it was amounted to real, um, real net neutrality, which means treating all websites the same. And I think in this case, I mean, I'm not a partisan in it, but the president has said, well, what's the point then? And that's this, this basically this bill is out. I think it might be sort of theatrics because everyone knows very well that Obama will, will veto it if they pass it. And so it's um, I think this for now, at least, is it's, it's more for the, uh, the stagecraft than the substance. Right. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. I know you're on the East Coast, so we will let you go. That's Jeff Roberts from GigaOM. What are you working on right now, Jeff? Oh, my goodness. Uh, a whole lot of FCC stuff. Um, and, uh, and otherwise, uh, preparing some dinner and uh, writing about uh, Taylor Swift was my last story of the week. So, oh, yeah, uh, I saw that. That, off. that was a really interesting article about the Republicans using Taylor Swift's GIFs and not asking her permission, you presume? Uh, no, but it's a fair use. It's just, uh, as an aside, it's sort of funny because copyright is something I write a lot about too. And when can you use clips without permission? And when should you get sued? And then lo and behold, there's this is the Speaker of the House's homepage, the official government <laughs> homepage is covered with this Taylor Swift gifts to make fun of Obama. So it's uh, it, was, it seemed less sort of a lighter thing to finish the week on. Right. Well, you can check out that story at GigaOM, right? And everything else that Jeff's been working on. Thanks so much for coming on, Thanks Jeff. Thanks so much, Megan. Take yeah, care. Have a good one. I know. Coming up, police arrest a suspected member of the Lizard Squad, and we show you the newest way to crack passwords. But first, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Squarespace recently launched the completely redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. Now it's even easier to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Here's why you'll love Squarespace. There's live editing on one screen, which means making changes is clearer and simpler with no more toggling to the preview mode. There are 14 new designs, giving you over 30 to choose from. Templates are designed for specific professions, so Squarespace has templates for musicians, artists, architects, restaurants, weddings, and e-commerce. You get access to Getty Images. For just $10 each, you can pick from thousands of professional Getty Images and use them on your site. With a portfolio, note, metric, and blog mobile apps, you can make changes from wherever you are. It's incredibly e easy to use, and if you want some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support around the clock. It's also inexpensive. It starts at just $8 a month, and Squarespace takes care of the hosting so you don't have to. Plus, you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website right now. When you sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT to get 10% off. We thank Squarespace for their support of tech news tonight. Squarespace, start here. 
go anywhere. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Police have arrested an 18-year-old man for suspected involvement in last December's cyber attacks on Sony PlayStation and Microsoft's Xbox Live service. The Southeast Regional Organized Crime Unit, or Soroku, has worked closely with the FBI and now they have a suspect in custody. Now, in addition to the denial of service attack, the man was also charged with swatting. That's a new prank, which involves making fake Skype calls in order to dispatch a SWAT team to someone's home. It's not very nice. This prank is often played on celebrities, but The Guardian reports that swatting has most recently become a common tactic that internet trolls use against opponents of Gamergate. Craig Jones, of the head of Cyber Crime Unit at Soroku, said, We are still at the early stages of the investigation, and there is much work to be done. Now, in a follow-up story that we reported last week, Google is picking on Microsoft. Again, earlier we told you about vulnerabilities that Google made public before Microsoft had time to patch them. Today, Google released another two vulnerabilities that Microsoft has yet to patch. Now, each time Google releases this information, even though they've given Microsoft 90 days to fix it, if Microsoft hasn't fixed it, Windows users are at risk. Peter Bright from Ars Technica said it would be nice for Google to give Microsoft a little more time but they probably won't, so the onus is really on Microsoft. If there were a greater willingness to ship patches outside of the Patch Tuesday schedule in the short term, this would at least provide Windows users with the option of patching. And finally, the weakest link in most security systems is the user. Late night talk show host Gimmel, Jimmy Kimmel demonstrated that fact on Hollywood Boulevard in L.A., Let's take a look. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where'd you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> It's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. But, Has you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So Jolie, 6, 12, 95. Yes. Got it. <laughs> That is crazy. I hope those people change their password. And if your password has your pet's name in it, go change it now. In fact, go change all your passwords right now. Go do it. I'll wait. Actually, I'm not going to wait. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Go change your password right now. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.